Oh, hello there. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 532. I'm sure it's 532. It has to be 532 with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. I hope you are good wherever this paid podcast may be meeting you. This paid podcast. You know what I said anyway. My English is not too great today. Maybe it's because of all the stuff I was eating and drinking yesterday, but you know how it is. Hope you're good wherever this may meet you. It's the day after Christmas. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're doing fine. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I hope you've had a good Christmas. I hope you've had a good start of your boxing day and you're just living life and doing the best you can with the time you have available. If it's your first time checking out my show, you know what to do. Smash like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment down below. If you're listening via the podcast app, please leave me a five-star review. That'd be greatly appreciated. I've seen a few on there already. I'm actually going to double check and see how many I've got because I think the last time I checked, I think I had like 14. Let me see if I've got that correct here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see what the Apple podcast thing is saying. Uh, 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 Apple podcast. There you go. It's the third link down. I have to figure out to make a homepage. I don't have to go straight to these mad links when I want to check this stuff out. <clears throat> and then if I scroll down here, it tells me how much feedback I have here so far. Ratings. What is it showing? It's taking a while to load because once I'm running this app, it does sometimes, for some reason, make the thing run slower. And so far, it says I have a total of 16 sick couple more so thank you so much for tuning in for leaving the ratings and all that stuff i really appreciate it you don't have to write a review if you don't want to don't worry about that so just leave a rating just leave a one two three four five star review that would be greatly appreciated honestly so definitely keep doing that i appreciate all your support on that front really do and of course if you want to support the podcast further be a patron you can only have to subscribe for one dollar the equivalent of one pound per month it's a bargain you get one episode free well, you get one one bonus episode per week for your subscription, as well as a bonus one at the end of the month is coming, of course, at the end of the month. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that one. There's already a bonus one already uploaded. I uploaded the other day. So if you want to hear more, definitely make sure you check that out. Please make sure you do. I'd greatly appreciate that. But here we are, man, back again. It's Boxing Day, right? Feeling good, feeling fresh, feeling fine. As you can tell, I've actually eaten quite a lot because I feel I've got a bit of a spot here. If you're not if you're not watching the video, I've got a bit of a spot there and some sort of spot on the side of my cheek, I think, somewhere around there, right? Can you see it? So obviously you can tell I've had a lot of grease. I've had a lot of fried stuff. I've had a lot of sweets. I've had a lot of chocolates, a lot of cake. Um, good times all around, so I can't complain about that. Can't really complain. Um, apart from that, really uneventful Christmas for the most part, just trying to keep my nose clean and just be on my best behavior, really, because I'm thinking about making some really um, big sweeping changes to the way I kind of go about my life um, in the new year. If you've listened to the Patreon, you will know what I'm talking about in terms of my resolutions and the things I'm kind of wrangling with in my head in terms of trying to get to the place I need to get to. But in general, I think to summarize it, because of course you have to listen to the Patreon if you want to hear the full thing. But in general, what I've kind of come away with it thinking is that if I want to be great and if I believe I'm as great as I think I am, if I have these grandiose delusions of grandeur and I really believe them wholeheartedly, then something has to give. That might mean the way I go out, the way I socialize, the way I just live my life. Something have to give. Something will have to give. I have to sacrifice one thing to get the other. Because in this life, for the again, for the small time that I've been on this planet, the only thing that I've kind of been yeah, for the small time I've been on this planet, the one thing that's kind of rung true, especially for people that I know or know of who are successful in their own lane, the only way to really be a success and the only way to really come closer or get closer to achieving your dreams in any sort of meaningful way is to sacrifice um, worldly things or sacrifice maybe, you know, leisurely things in order to pursue your thing that you want to actually do. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of effort. You're going to have to, again, disappoint people. You might fall out with friends, you might lose contact with people, but in general, if you want that life that you've actually been longing for, you're going to have to give up some things. And I've just, have got to that point now where I'm realizing, okay, cool, I have to give up a lot of shit. So, um, and I haven't been giving up anything in it. I've been kind of trying to 
do both things at once and it just doesn't work unfortunately i wish it could i've tried really diligently trust me i've tried and it hasn't worked so far so the only solution now is to try and do away with some things in order to kind of pursue the other thing i know it's a bit vague it's a little bit surface a little bit nothing words but if you want to hear more detail then head over head over to my patreon at patreon.com for such agostino you'll hear more details on that as well as some documentary reviews movie reviews coming up very soon so if you want to check out all that stuff my bonus content make sure you check out my patreon at patreon.com forward slash my first name which is spelled agostino a-g-o-s-t-i-n-h-o do that right now and i'll be greatly appreciated but yeah back again um what we talk about today um christmas is here uh, it's looking like for some weird thing weird 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 thing in it a weird kind of stroke of luck england right the place that i'm in might be the only country i guess within our home nations that will have nightclubs open Wales won't, Republic of Ireland won't, Scotland won't. We'll be the only place that have nightclubs open on New Year's Eve, which is absolutely wild, considering how um, knee-jerky the government were when it came to restrictions last year. Yeah? It seems like whenever things were happening in some of our other home nations, the country would kind of react you know, to the same way they did. So if Wales did something or Scotland did something, then suddenly the Tories would want to make a move because they didn't want to be seen as kind of, um, I guess, flipping Divering on a job, right, or something, or twiddling their thumbs. But now it's completely changed. Now they're kind of just leading in their own way, or maybe it's a reaction to all of the bad press they've been getting from those pictures that have been leaked in the press of, you know, them having you know garden parties and office parties and stuff during last year's lockdown when obviously they told people to not be around other people and whatnot, and they obviously did the complete opposite. So maybe they're doing it in a way to like, how can you say? to kind of maybe save face and to maybe make it look like they're not hypocrites. I don't really know, but it's really interesting to see. So that's been a pretty interesting state of affairs. I'm still not, I'm still not kind of, um, what's that word called? I still don't believe there's going to be a lot of people out in New Year's Eve. I just don't. From what I've seen, again, I'm quite plugged in, I think, on my end of things, especially when it comes to the more ravey side of stuff. I think I, I know quite a few people there. I haven't seen many people really talking too much about New Year's Eve on that front. Um, and then I've also not seen a lot of casuals that I would know who'd kind of go to these kind of things just because they've got nothing to do or because they just want to have a bit of a dance, right? I've not seen them say anything. Um, I've seen loads of events sli silently getting cancelled or being postponed, which has been a bit strange. They're not really talking or saying much. They're just like silently cancelling them and not really announcing them on their social. Um, so it's leading me to believe that a lot of places are really struggling to stay open, struggling to sell tickets. Because I'd imagine New Year's Eve is probably a lot like Halloween, right? So I'm drinking a tea here because I'm flipping freezing and I've just put on the heater. But um, I'd imagine New Year's Eve is a bit like Halloween. Whereas when you're a promoter, Halloween is like the kind of holy grail. You want to do it, right? You want to you wanna be able to have a chance to throw in a party during that time or like Valentine's Day. But what you forget is that it's also one of the most competitive days to throw a party because everyone's throwing one. So in order for you to get people to come to yours, you're going to have to offer, offer something really different. And for the most part, if you think about it, most promoters aren't really offering anything different, right? We're all doing the same thing. We're all kind of maybe booking the similar sort of artists. We're basically putting our parties on the similar sort of venues. There's nothing that we're doing that's really that different if we're really serious about it. So if that's the key, then you're going to find it really difficult to get people to come to your um, parties in that way. Do you know what I mean? It's just not going to work. So I saw that. And I thought to myself, you know what? With this New Year's Eve, with the way Omicron's going, I just don't. I just don't think people are gonna bother. I think people are gonna just like decide to do other things. And from what I saw from my barber, who obviously gave me my fade, right? If you can see, um, he was saying a few of his friends who are again I would classify as normies, again not to be insulting, but just you know regular average day people, and they were telling me that what they're gonna do is just go to like, a restaurant somewhere in Camden. Um, preferably somewhere that, that you know has decent drinks and maybe has a bit of a sound system in there maybe has a DJ playing in the corner maybe not maybe a decent Spotify playlist maybe a live band whatever just those kind of you know those kind of restaurants right and then just have a have some dinner welcome in the new year that way and then if it happens to be a bit of a locking in that place you stay if there doesn't and you can go to another bar then you go but they're just doing away with the idea of going to an actual nightclub an actual event which most people which a lot of people do even people that don't party will do that in new year's eve because it's a great way to just welcome in the new year but a lot of people i've seen are like nah they're not bothering because if you can save money especially now people have bought a lot i think what i've seen i've seen a, more, more people in my timeline sharing gifts they've given to people or gifts they've received 
than I've ever seen in my entire life on social media, I think. This has been one of them where I've seen more people kind of exchanging gifts. Even, think about it, I've seen many people proposing. And I imagine when you propose to somebody, you have to buy the ring. You probably already have specked out the idea of when you want to get married. So you're kind of already in the process of setting that whole thing up. So you spend a bit of money. So people are willing to spend money on engagements, are willing to spend money buying presents for direct family, extended family, friends at work and all that stuff. And are happy to do secret Santas over Zoom. I think those same people aren't going to be willing to take that money and go to a nightclub. I just don't think so. I think they're going to be like, nah, I'll sack it off. If I can't go to dinner, I'll just stay in or whatever, do something different. So I think it's going to be a very interesting and um, uh, kind of climate out there when it comes to New Year's Eve, especially in London, because usually it's like, you know, so many bodies on the floor, people just like, you know, going way too hard, too quickly, peaking too early, as I always say, and just a complete mess. But this time around, it might be a bit easy, on the, especially some of the street cleaners or some of the police officers that work during that time, because I can't imagine how difficult it is to kind of get any semblance of control or to feel like you're actually doing any part of your job when you just clean up some sick and then suddenly someone else just next to you is throwing up next to a, a flipping... Uh, um, bid or something you're like oh my god man this is never gonna end so i can just imagine how that feels so maybe this time around it might be better for him in that regard or it might be a thing where the actual parties that are on are extra hard so maybe not a lot of people are out but the ones that are on are like crazy people are just going super nuts because they're the ones that decided to flip and go out and spend some time outside doing whatever they're doing but yeah let's see what happens in it let's see what happens with that but many many things are gonna probably occur between now and then um i want to start the show off with a bit of a horrible horrible story this is courtesy of bbc i just wanted to speak about it just because I went to off. I went to just ask an open-ended question that hopefully some of my American um, listeners can maybe fill me in on on what's going on over there in the states, especially when it comes to the LAPD. This is courtesy of BBC News. It says police stray bullet kills teen in LA store's dressing room. Yes, you heard that right. A police stray bullet kills a teenager in LA store's dressing room, and I think the store is a Burlington, right? So I'm assuming that's just like an all-in-one sort of place, like a Matalan. It says it sells like ladies, men's, kids, babies and home coats and whatnot. So maybe it's like a Matalan type of store. It says the following here. It says, um, Los Angeles police have killed two people, including a 14-year-old girl trying on new outfits after opening fire inside of a clothing store. Like, it's just like, Jesus, these people are so bad at their job. It says a straight bullet hit the teen as she was in a change room with her mother trying to dress for a birthday party. Police say the shooting came after reports sh- of of shots fired by a man inside the store the suspect was shot dead but no gun was found so not only are they shooting into a shopping center or shooting in a shopping center with many people around people probably hiding behind mannequins or stored store flipping displays or change rooms that maybe this girl was in or maybe just shopping not only they're shooting in there because they think someone's got a gun but the guy who they thought had a gun didn't have even have one on him so what was this shots fired report that came in why didn't the police actually do their jobs to investigate if the person actually had a weapon again i don't know how you do it i don't know again i'm, I'm not a police officer i don't have any idea how that training goes or how they can spec it out but surely there's a way that they can do where they can ascertain has this person got a gun yay or nay but like just shooting somebody in an up in a supermarket full of people thinking they've got a gun and then accidentally killing a 14 year old is just i cannot even imagine the State Department's Justice uh, the State Department of Justice is currently investigating the shooting, and of course they're most likely going to find a guy or, or girl who did it and like you know innocent straight away. Just nonsense. This took place on Thursday morning around eleven forty-five um, p.m. Is it eleven forty-five p.m. No, eleven forty-five a.m. I'm assuming at Burnton's store in North Hollywood. Um, and made a throng of holiday shoppers. Witnesses and store employees told local media that a man was acting erratically inside the store and smashing display cases. Okay, cool. Just standard public freakout stuff you see on Reddit. Um, police said nine nine one one caller reported hearing arguing inside the store and just his shots may have been fired. Whoever reported that into the police you're probably feeling guilty too, right? Because you're probably going to feel like you're somewhat responsible. Whoever overreacted and panicked and said there were shots fired when somebody was just smashing glass. But again, that might be... To let to give that person a bit of bligh, that might be part of the stress that goes on when you're trying to remember this kind of things, which maybe explains why a lot of people say, um, 
I think some people, yeah, is it right? Like supposedly eyewitness accounts are really unreliable because people don't like two people seeing one thing won't remember it the same way. So they're the worst sort of like gauge on what happened. Maybe you have to pull, maybe you have to kind of find a common thread uh, amongst many different eyewitnesses accounts, but just taking one person's version of events isn't necessarily a version of truth. It's just basically what they saw. Maybe what they saw might have got tainted somewhat by their fight or flight or whatever, right? So maybe that was part of it. Um, a fire department officer told reporters and probably as well i think i'd imagine nowadays with stuff that's going on in the world especially in the states maybe people are a lot more nervous and a lot more on edge when they go to a shopping center because of what's happening in terms of mass shootings and whatnot they don't want to be another victim so maybe when they hear those kind of sounds the automatic thing they go to is oh yeah shit this is a shooting maybe i don't know it continues said here a fire department official told reporters that officers had arrived to find an individual who was in the process of assaulting another on an upper level floor store prompting them to open fire like can't you disarm somebody who's assaulting somebody without opening your gut like without shooting them i don't know again maybe i don't maybe i'm confused here but don't they have bats don't they have like pepper spray don't they have things that they can use stun guns that can uh, you know temporarily uh make someone basically not able to hurt somebody else and you can take them down this whole idea that someone's hurt so uh, that's why i don't care it's police officers in america see two people fighting in the street like fist fighting what do they do Do they just start shooting or do they come and break it up like with their actual hands the suspect died almost instantly um, a heavy bicycle lock was found near the body but no gun was found a bicycle lock they thought it was a gun um officers then found a hole in the nearby wall of a dressing room behind the suspect and a teenager girl dead inside on friday the la county coroner's office identified her as vanessa or Or orlana peralta now this is where i think the whole like um what's that thing called uh white girl white woman syndrome thing might be real because if this girl again god forbid we don't want it to happen in r.i.p um valentina or orlana peralta R.I.P. her and forced her to her family. But if this girl was some white girl from the middle of America, blonde, blue eyes, cute as a button, and she passed away, this would be a whole different story. Let's let's just get that un let's just get that out there and why did it open? That's the unfortunate side about this whole thing. But also, the other unfortunate side of it, with it being LA, most likely this girl is Hispanic, right? Most likely she's Mexican, most likely, or some somewhere around, you know, um what would you call it? somewhere around um is that is that deemed as a is that deemed as what would you would you call that area where nicaragua honduras mexico what's that area called is is that northern south america does that make even sense it's not really is it well i wonder what the area is called if you know what that area is called please tell me no that little stretch just just underneath mexico where all those countries are well what would you call that that bit there but whatever right she's she's obviously from that area and she because that's where most of the people move to when they you know leave their country to come to america they usually go to there in terms, in terms of la so you'd imagine there'd be a lot more uproar you know and outrage at this happening and they'd want to you know bring the officers that were you know responsible for this to task and you know actually have them punished in some way shape or form but probably it's not going to happen Instead, what what you saw happen the other day will happen, right? That woman who accidentally killed the kid at a traffic stop, right? I think she pulled him over for something, violation, whatever it may be. And she mistakenly pulled for her gun instead of pulling for her taser and shot the kid twice and obviously died on the spot. And she'd been found guilty. And they're basically going to probably throw the book at her. But she's the only person I can think of in recent times that's been found guilty of that. And again, why is it a no surprise? Because it's a woman. So it looks like the union or whatever it may be when it comes to police or whatever that thin blue line is or, you know, whatever the code of silence, whatever they have there, it only applies for dudes, but not for women. It only applies when the victim or the perp is a minority. No, it's not a minority. Do you know what I mean? It's just like such a bizarre system. It really is. But I just, I just don't know what it's about. Is it because these guys don't have good training? Is it just because the job inherently attracts shitty people? Is it because the gun and the badge turns decent people into shitty people just because of the level of power and authority they have um, with people, especially in certain communities? What is it about that job? Honestly, I don't know. What is it in America about that job that makes the police there so inept? We have our issues here in the UK. We really do. But I guess the issues here in the UK aren't as um, aren't as life or death 
threatening because we don't have guns, right? Police officers here only have like trunches and shit. Maybe, you know, there's obviously some, what are they called? I think SO9, right? We have SO9 who come in and have guns if, if you're involved in crime or not so you're involved in like high level crime or drugs or something. They obviously do come with guns. And of course, we've, got, we've still got our SWAT team in that regard. But day to day, police officers don't have guns here, just bats, right? Or pepper spray or whatnot. And really hard, you know, handcuffs that really hurt your wrist. Cool. But in America, they have guns, right? So the consequences for getting something wrong are fatal, right? You can legitimately make a family be out, you know, without their aunt, without their mom, sister. You know, that's a big consequence you're doing because you mistakenly, you know, pause for this and not for that. But I just don't know what it is about the police officers of every day in general where they're just so shit at their job. It just, it frightens me how bad they are, man. It's just shockingly bad. And they don't, I don't say they don't seem to care, but there's no, there's no, there's, it doesn't seem to be any effort or any kind of desire to make them better either. It seems to get worse. And I think that's why I think the whole George Floyd thing, especially in the States, was such a missed opportunity for all minority groups within the United States to just maybe band together and kind of push for some police reform. That whole idea about, you know, um, disbanding the police is just stupid. No one would sense thinks it's a good idea to disband the police and instead replace them with what, community officers and stuff? Like, it doesn't make any sense. But it's not a practical solution as well, right? It's just not going to work. But you would imagine with the death of George Floyd and with some other high-profile deaths here and there, especially even, who's that guy? There was an old guy during the riots or during some of the protests who got kicked by a police officer and knocked his head on the ground, was out for time. Like, just some gruesome stuff you saw during around the time of the riots, right? It, like, kind of uh, post-George Floyd's death. Um, some police, you know, being too heavy-handed with protests and just being shitty people. You would imagine that the minorities who obviously were mostly to... The minority population in the United States who mostly suffered at the hands of police would maybe band together and say, like, you know what, enough is enough. We need to call for reform. Here's our demands, X, Y, Z, right? In every state in America, just kind of band around in that regard because that's the only way change is going to happen. But instead, somehow it still turned into like a infighting within the black community about George Floyd's death, infighting within that community because they feel like they're not getting attention that they need in terms, especially the Asian community, when it all happened and they were getting attacked on the streets, you know, um, because people thought they were at fault for COVID. Like, so many groups of people, especially minorities in that country, felt they had their own little battle they had to fight during a time when maybe it made more sense for them to all band around this banner of like, okay, police brutality and then kind of, let's, let's, let's kind of list our demands. That didn't happen. And instead we have this situation where you have cops just shooting into a shopping centre, you know, through a war and hitting a 40 year old kid. But also, this oddly, this weirdly also explains why, you remember when people were saying, I think, I forgot what mass shooting was, maybe it might have been that Las Vegas one where the guy was in some casino hotel shooting people at, at, you know, at some country music festival. I remember someone leaking a video of, oh, the police, I guess, putting a video out of his officer with his body cam on and I think he must have passed like Dan Belzerian or something and he was kind of asking him to give him his gun so he can help like take down the assailant. And the guy was like, shut up, man, leave me alone, Jeremy. Like, of course, you just duck and cover, you know, because I'm not giving you my gun. And then I think somebody explained in the comments like, oh, or someone in the comments, I forgot, or something where I forgot I saw it, where they were like, some people have this idea in their head that to stop my shootings, you need to give like teachers guns and shit. And I think the, the argument that they were saying was, it actually what ends up happening if you give somebody that's not as trained to you know fire a weapon during such a stressful time, they'll end up having more victims on the end of their gun than the actual perp. They will actually have the adverse effect. And this obviously proves the point, do you know what I mean? Um, because if I was another person in that place that had a gun, then maybe we'd have more than two people dead. Do you know what I mean? Because clearly, you know, the line of sight of where you're firing and who's around, it's just, it's just too crazy. It just doesn't make any sense. It really, really doesn't. Um, after then, da, 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 she had been trying on a dress for a quinceanera, a coming of age tradition originated in Latin America, celebrating a girl's 15th birthday, police officer told any time. So sad, man. Tragic. Local media was also showing a woman with a bloodied face who appears to be assault, the, the assault victim being taken away from the store in an ambulance. The man who was shot by police has not yet been publicly named. On Thursday night, Los Angeles Police Chief Michael Moore promised a thorough, complete and transparent investigation into what he called a chaotic incident. Chaotic incident? Chaotic? <laughs> like what? I'm profoundly sorry for the loss of this young girl's life, and I know there are no words that can believe the imaginable pain for the family. 
a day before Christmas, she's shopping for a quinceanera, which I'm guessing was around the time Christmas was around anyway. So maybe it was a couple of days after or maybe during the new year. With her mum, like, it's just, I don't know, man. I can't imagine the pain they're going through, bro. Absolutely heinous stuff. As part of the review, the department expected to release a video of the incident, including officers worn body cam and the burns and security cameras. California Attorney General Rob uh, Bonita said that he would conduct an independent investigation and refer his findings to a team of special prosecutors. A state law passed in July mandates that all fatal police shootings of unnamed incidents, sorry, civilians, be investigated by the State Department of Justice. So, they're of course taking it seriously but i just want to know man what is it about american police like are they just all bad at their job um is the job really hard and and not a lot of people can do it well or does that gun and badge turn fairly decent people into absolute dumb nuts when they have that gun and badge let me know in the comments down below i'd love to know your thoughts and opinions regarding that one then we're going to switch on into this news regarding, um, you know, the updates in terms of club land when it comes to COVID-19. You can't get much better when you're cold, especially post-Christmas and you want to just get some warmth in you and you want to just feel like you, you've had a hug. Nothing better than some Earl Grey tea. Nothing better. PG tips, you know, some coconut sugar. It's just It just hits right. It hits different. It really does hit different. I can't deny, man. One of the greatest things about growing up in this country is the appreciation of tea. Because this has helped me out in so many different occasions, right? When I'm not really, I don't really know what to drink. I don't really know what to eat. You have some tea and it kind of satiates your hunger for a bit. It allows you to maybe think of some things. It allows you to think of what you want to eat with a clear mind. Because sometimes you, you're hungry and you're like, I want to get a Domino's. Or I want to get an Uber Eats. Or I want to get a whatever, right? And you don't really need it, right? You're just getting it because you just, you know, your eyes are bigger than your belly. But if you have a little bit of tea, maybe you grab a cracker, you grab some bread, whatever. Just something just to kind of satiate you for that small amount of time. Usually you find that, you know what, I don't need that. I've got some rice in the cupboard. I've got this, I've got that. And you just make it and you forget about ordering. So I really, I really can't have enough good things to say about old grey tea, especially PG tips. That would be a proper podcast sponsor. Forget all people having their podcast sponsored with, you know, Buffalo Trace and Jameson's and Proper Twelve and some wine drink or some underwear company. No, no, no. Give me PG tips, bro. I'll sell the hell out of that for real. Ooh wee! That's some good shit. That is some good shit. Anyway, let's move on. So, talking about Clubland, this is courtesy of Resident Advisor. Again, they have they have a really good little update page where they provide you with kind of um, updates again regarding Clubland and what's open and what's not. Um, for the most part, I've been able to judge it quite accurately because of the people that I follow, people that I've kind of have um, recommended on my feed through other people that I follow. And for the most part, from why I've been able to see, you know, places like um, Budapest in Hungary, you know, it's a bit of best, right? In Hungary, that's been really popular. I've seen people going across to Mexico to party and to put on nights. I've seen people going to parts of Southeast Asia. That's been really popular. Um, and that's been about it. But everywhere else seems to be closed, basically mainland Europe. Um, so if you do want to rave or do want to party, it seems that this place is the only one. So I'm assuming if you have the ability to travel or you have some exemption or you, whatever, I'm assuming you're going to see quite a lot of your favourite DJs from Europe probably playing here the next couple of months. Maybe from the end of December all the way maybe to the start of February, you're going to see a lot of your favourite DJs come here. So if you're kind of, you know, on the fence about going out and you, or you want to get a bargain or you want to get yeah, value for money, you definitely do that. There's a one event actually happening um that Teddy House event that I went to in Fold, they're doing it back in their kind of regular haunt in Manchester in a place called, I think, Hidden Club or something. And they've got a pretty stacked lineup there too. And that, of course, mostly I would imagine has to do with the fact that, you know, most of their people that have playing on that list are from Europe. And the fact that they can't play in Europe is making them obviously come here for a short period of time. I'd imagine if you've got the possibility to book more gigs or you just want to kind of hot desk and move around for a month, maybe you could come and live here for a month and then fly back. I don't know how these guys will do it, but this is an update courtesy of r8 let's scroll down a bit here it says the following um as part so as cases of the covid19 variant omicron saw worldwide here's a summary of how the pandemic continues to impact clubs festivals promoters and electronic music scene key points 
Oh, let's just start with the thing. Friday the 24th of December says India. Starting December 25th, Mumbai will implement a night curfew from 9pm to 6am. Restaurant bars and our outdoor spaces can open 50% capacity while outdoor events are capped to 25% seat capacity. This is a big one too because I think at the... I think summer of last year, there were quite a lot of raves in India too happening. I saw a lot of people like, you know, Dixon and Arm and a few other guys going over to India and playing. Um, the clubs look absolutely sick. It's quite cool to see like different variations of the same club. I'm pretty sure when I saw a video of Dixon play someone in India, he was playing in a place that effectively looked like a smaller version of Printworks. That's all it was. It was just print works but smaller, which was absolutely sick to see. Like, there, people have copied other people's architecture and interior design and basically replicated it in their own city with their own little twist. It just looked a little bit more light. It had a little more light in it. It wasn't as dark as maybe print works was, but it's kind of the same sort of layout, like how it is, right? Like a rectangular shape with um, the railings, obviously, at the top, like kind of to simulate um, or to represent what a printing factory would actually look like. But then I think they had it a little bit shorter. The stage is a little bit raised up. It was really, really cool. I, honestly, I can't deny that. It says here, continues, it says, dance parties with DJs will be prohibited in the city of Bangalore law. Um, from December the 30th to January the 2nd. So it seems like a lot of governments are taking the opportunity to basically prevent any po a mass amount of people gathering around during NYE because they know that's where most people go out. But I think, unfortunately, from what I can ascertain, if you are a person that is going to go out, most likely you don't care about the COVID, you don't care about the vaccine, so you're going to go out anyway. So these mandates don't really do much, so you're going to find out a way to kind of rave. You're going to either hire a place, you're going to go to someone's house, you just maybe you might just stand in the street if you're permitted to, but I think there's going to be a lot of that going on. Honestly, don't be surprised if you see that. Um, Thursday update here said Italy big one too because that's a big market for a lot of people to play in public New Year's Eve celebrations are now banned while clubs concerts and open air events are being ordered to close until January 31st so if we are able again I'm not too sure what the deal is here but the rumours are 27th or 28th we're going to have another restriction or another lockdown but then I heard another story come out recently saying that we're going to be the only place um, in you know of our home nations that are going to have nightclubs open on New Year's Eve so I don't know how you can close for a week and a bit and then open again you know what I mean it doesn't make any sense so most likely if they haven't closed now already it's most likely not going to happen so it's definitely going to be a place where you're going to be able to come out but you know full sorry for my Italian brothers and sisters out there it says here Greece public Christmas and New Year's Eve celebrations are as well as any other crowd events are officially cancelled India New Delhi are prohibited to public sorry are prohibited public Christmas and New Year's Eve gatherings as well as cultural events restaurants and bars meanwhile can uh, can only operate the, the, the half capacity USA New York City scaling down its annual New Year's Eve celebration at Times Square from pre pandemic levels of 58,000 people to at least 15,000 people with a mask mandate in fact imagine having to stand outside with a mask on in New York watching Don Lemon and some other weapon talk about New Year's Eve and how much they drank and how much they're thankful for that'd be funny now you know that'd be funny though actually if Justice Monet popped out from the back at Don Lemon's talking that would be absolutely hilarious um, another one here said New York venue nowadays, which is a sick one too, to check out their pictures and clips online. It says it will host their New Year's Eve non-stop party outdoors. The club then plans to take a few weeks off and reopen by January the 20th. Also in New York, Mood Ring is closing this week. It's a Spain here in Catalonia. Clubs will um, close for two weeks from December 24th. Concert venues will, can operate at 70% with seated audience and night curfew for big people from circulating um, between 1am and 6am. So basically they've closed clubs in that way Malta the same thing from Monday 27th standing events excluding weddings and funerals are banned and all venues have a 1am curfew including ahead of access to clubs Looking forward, sorry, looking further ahead, access to access to clubs, venues, and other public spaces will now be available to people with a valid vaccination certificate from January 17th. So they're being quite flat out with their um, requirements. I think we'll see a lot of people doing that too, actually, when they reopen up certain parts of hospitality. Just say, look, if you want to stay open, you're going to have to require all your patrons to have a vaccine passport. It just is what it is. I think they might end up doing that going forward because I don't think you can convince people who haven't got the vaccine to get it um and i just think it's a mad thing but it continues here scotland newcastle sorry newcastle why why can't i read these days now it comes to close for at least three weeks from december 27th the rule comes only after capacity limits were placed on events deputy minister john sweeney said fund sorry funding would be available to affected businesses australia new south wales reduced a draft 
a raft of new changes, including mandatory mask indoors. England has masters postponed boot boxing day rave. Uh, China. So yeah, many things have been cancelled. Many things are still open. Um, I was actually going to confirm my bang face weekend, the tickets and shit, but I'm holding off on that until maybe the last minute because I want to make sure I'm able to, we're able to go because the last thing you need is to have all that money tied up in something that's not happening. So let's see, fingers crossed. But yeah, man, interesting times ahead, isn't it? Interesting times ahead. Oh my God. Anyway, what else was going to continue with? Let's move on from that. Oh, this is quite an interesting one. This is a little story courtesy of Hypebeast, and it features the one and only Young Fug. It looks like Young Fug has stepped into the world of, um, what would you call it? Ambassadorship. And he's now, it looks like, some sort of ambassador or client or consultant of the one and only Giuseppe Zanotti for the launch of their new Cobra sneakers. Which makes sense, of course, because, you know, Young Fug is a fan of snakes. He is Mr. Slime. He is Mr. S. But I thought this link up was a pretty accurate one and something that made a lot of sense, especially considering the brand, considering the artist, their messaging. And I was wanting to, I just wanted to kind of highlight it mostly because. I've had this role before in kind of big brands where I've kind of been responsible for being the somewhat cultural consultant, cultural coordinator, cultural assistant, but somebody that was basically in charge of ensuring the company I was working for was doing things that were culturally significant, um, you know, within their marketing pushes and their marketing plans. And usually it will just involve you being plugged in and having some awareness of what's going on out there, whether it comes to who's the biggest hip hop artist, no, or somebody who's kind of big in hip hop, but isn't maybe that well known, somebody that's big in culture that probably doesn't, people just don't know about if you're not plugged in that way, somebody that's just big on the scene, who maybe has some sort of tying with the brand that makes a lot of sense that people wouldn't know about, just doing something really interesting and kind of cool so that what I've usually found is that when you pick those kind of people, they might not be the most, they might not be a person that sort of, you know, moves the needle a lot at the moment that you pick them. But if that person you pick is somebody that clearly has talent and clearly knows what they're doing, more times, out, you know, nine times out of 10, a few years down the line, they then become a big deal. And that thing that that branded with that person two or one years ago comes back again into the limelight. So it, it becomes like, um, it sort of becomes like a dormant activation plan that you've kind of put together where um, maybe at the time it didn't exactly cause a big splash, but then later on down in life, that person gets, you know, um, is kind of hired by a big brand or they launch some cool project. Suddenly people are typing up and trying to find out everything they've done. And then they discover that they've, oh, they've worked with this company you worked with for prior. It makes the company look cool because it makes them look forward thinking because they obviously stepped in before they were really, really famous. And in general, it just makes you look cool, like you're really plugged in. So I was a real big fan of that. And I think it's definitely a role that def definitely kind of, um, I wouldn't say it gets overlooked, but people don't really give it enough respect or enough kudos that it probably should do. Because again, like I said, I also think working in that kind of role for a big corporation or big company is a really hard job because usually you're the only person who's fighting for that person whoever that you know influencer is or that consultant or brand advisor or an ambassador you're the only person that's really going to bat for them you're the only person that really knows how important they are and sometimes it can be a bit of a lonely fight in that regard but if you are willing to stick f with it and kind of pers persist with the person that you want to pick usually it does kind of bear the fruits of it i think so we continue here with the article it says um having teased um Sorry, having uh, teased at this year's Milan Fashion Week, Giuseppe Sonotti unveils the latest silhouette, the Cobras. Recognised for embracing the snake emblem on the artwork and uh, across the social channels, it, it only right that the acclaimed Atlanta rapper Young Frog introduced the sneakers to the latest campaign on the line with a bold uh, um, aesthetic. With an upper constructed with Lux leather, the star of the show um, for the low top sneaker is its scaled. 3D Cobra with crystal set eyes wrapped around the midsole, reappearing on the outsole, as well as the abstract heel and perforated box. Giuseppe Zanotti's iconic signature uh, features of the lace tag and the tongue. It says here, quote, I have always loved them, the symbolism of the snakes, says Zanotti. It's powerful, dynamic motive I have explored in many collections, but never before on a sneaker. Obviously, Giuseppe Zanotti has like a really rich history in hip hop. 
and you would say kind of in black culture. I think if I'm not mistaken as well, wasn't Giuseppe Sonotti the place that um, Virgil, Abloh and Kanye West kind of interned at a little bit for a while? Is that the place? Giuseppe Sonotti? I think so. And I think they might have designed a few things there, but it's always had a really cool tie-in with um, black culture, especially hip-hop. And for whatever reason, the owner or whoever's in charge over there seems to be also willing to kind of share the limelight with black hip- with hip-hop artists and black and you know people in black culture too. Because often... You know, some of these companies seem a bit like reluctant to kind of reach out and support people who are basically being given a lot of organic love because they feel as if maybe the messaging is wild or, you know, they just don't like black people in general. But I, I like the fact that they're embracing it all. And don't get me wrong, the sneaker is pretty awful to look at. I'm not going to lie. It's not necessarily something I'd wear. If you listen to the podcast, if you're wondering what it looks like, it basically looks like um, an Air Force One with a snake wrapped around it on the sole. So imagine if you had some sort of 3D snake that you could design around a, a shoe. That's what it basically looks like. So it's not the most creative or innovative or forward-thinking design of a shoe. But again, I just think for the messaging and the kind of brand connection and again, the cultural element of it, you know, lining up somebody like a young thug with this sort of brand, it definitely does make a lot of sense. And definitely is something that I could see kind of becoming a big sneaker down the line, especially if the people that need to wear it or the people that they're kind of trying to market to decide that it's a representation of luxury, it's a representation of, you know, whatever it may be, and they kind of take it forward because that, that, that's basically all it needs. It's kind of like similar. It reminds me a little bit similar, maybe the bottom of the sole to um, the Versace chain reactions that obviously two chains obviously made a big, um, made a big hit. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, they were designed by um, that Salihi Benbury guy as well in it. So it it doesn't take much for these kind of shoes to work and to go from like suddenly being something that no one cares about something to suddenly being something people care about. Because if I'm not mistaken, too, those chain reactions were, for whatever reason, adopted a lot with those kind of you know those kids in hip hop who or artists in general who kind of look like the regen of what Chief Keef used to look like, that kind of style, where you got like really small t-shirts, small skinny jeans, you sag your pants and you got a pair of Versace chain reactions on. And they're really popular too with basketball players. I remember seeing, um, I forgot which one of the LeVar brothers wearing them. He was wearing a few of them quite often. Um, I actually like the black ones. I didn't really mind the black ones, but actually when I saw them in real life, they didn't actually, you know, set my world on fire. But I could definitely see these kind of having a similar level of success as the Versace chain reactions, to be honest. All it needs are a few different colorways, maybe change the paneling on the actual shoes also. It's not maybe as kind of plain as it looks now with these ones. Or maybe that's what they're trying to go for. I can think definitely these things could go next level because essentially, like I said, it definitely just looked like an Air Force One with a snake wrapped around it. But I like it. It says it continues. Um, Fighting space between luxury and contemporary design. The Cobra sneaker arrives in four tonal colorways, pink, red, uh, black and white, which is interesting approach for a new sneaker just to go straight up um, tonal instead of kind of trying to do interesting colorways. I wonder if that's going to end up kicking them in the bum later, but who knows? Um, It says, yeah, speaking on Zanetti's connection, Young Fuck explains um he's got the style thing down but knows how to change it up and layer around expected it's the street and it's fire he said the cobra sneaker is now available to purchase the jeppesnotti's boutique jeppesnotti online store and set retailers check out the campaign video above and for more information visit the site on the website or visit the link above. you know what i mean but yeah okay cool Giuseppe Zanotti Cobras check those out and like I said before if you're somebody who's worked in the marketing field like I have or you're somebody that kind of wants to get back in there I really do recommend trying to reach out to those companies that may be a little bit um, stuck in their ways a little bit old school and trying to make a move that way and trying to become the brand ambassador or trying to become like the cultural consultant the marketing coordinator when it comes to those sort of things because usually you can get yourself in the middle of pretty cool projects and you know maybe at the time they might not be the biggest success but down the line you can look back at it and say oh wow look i was a person that was in charge of this project i got this person involved they end up being a big deal Blah, 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 blah. So definitely check it out. I think it's definitely a good way to kind of um, get your name, um, you know, get your name started ringing around those kind of places. I really, really do. What else we got here? Uh, what else we got here? What else we got here? Uh, let's move around. Yeah, this um, this there's this um, little article here courtesy of Hype Beats as well talking about Adidas Originals, um, Metaverse NFT collection, and it's like 
okay, yeah, selling out immediately and all that sort of malarkey. And I'm like, is it me or is all this NFT stuff really shit? Like, it doesn't look good. It looks really crap. The illust illustrations are pretty dire. I don't like the style of the illustrations. I don't really care about apes too much. I wonder what the ape thing is about either. Why is that such a big deal? Is that because of gorillas or something? Like, why did the ape become the symbol that everyone kind of latched onto? I don't really understand. I don't really get. And like I said, it just doesn't look like cool art. It does. It looks like the sort of um, dated art you would see around Brick Lane or something, right? Um, on those sort of walls, people painting the sort of really dated early two thousands um, timeout background, you know, graffiti sort of stuff. It just doesn't look cool. Doesn't look interesting. Doesn't speak to our times, and just looks a bit meh. But for whatever reason, in the NFT world, these things are just hot potatoes, man. People are, you know, I, was it? I saw the other day, um, yeah, little Baby bought one. Uh, Gunner got a tattoo of one of his bored apes on his calf or something, right, on him. Um, people are really going crazy for this stuff. They really are. And, of course, when a student people go crazy for it, all the big corporations, all the big brands latch onto it. They start to do really tired little um, examples or ideas in their heads that they think usually work. And then for, by that time, the things are already dead. You know what I mean, as soon as you see these brands jump onto stuff like this, you know it's done. You know it's over. Um, but, yeah, I don't really get it. I really don't. I think it all looks terrible. It really does look so gash, um, especially the way they've done it here. I don't know who these guys are. Um, maybe people that work in Adidas, but again, they're not very cool. They all look like, you know, boomers who are trying to dress like they're 18. Um, it just looks terrible. Just shocking, shocking, shocking. It says here, on December 17th, Adidas Originals ventured into the metaverse with this debut NFT collection titled Into the Metaverse. Come on cringe the endeavor created by the board ape yacht club g money and punks comic featuring 30,000 nfts priced between 0 0.2 ethereum about 800 dollars price between 800 dollars god almighty the sale generated over 23 million dollars in revenue according to a crypto briefing each nft purchase guaranteed access to a physical merchandise including a hoodie tracksuit and more virtual wearables and virtual event access into the metaverse although the nft collection was a success it was not without technical difficulty nft minting for early access holders was halted for about two hours due to transactional failures however that is assured the parties who lost ethereum due to the difficulties will be reimbursed but it's just like it just looks so shit I don't know, man. Maybe I'm I'm not I'm not plugged in too much. If some of my followers, some of my listeners, some of my fans can maybe let me know what I'm missing out on, what I'm not seeing. But again, as a fan of contemporary art, as a fan of art in general, as a fan of comic books, I, you know, as a fan of illustration, like I legitimately think this looks shit. Like no one can like convince me otherwise that this doesn't look pants. Like it looks so dated. Like this cowboy. Be like I don't know. Like what is this? Like why is this such a cool thing? Why are people latching onto it? Is it maybe mostly an age thing? Am I maybe showing my boomer mindset that I don't understand it? I'm not plugged in. Maybe this is a way to separate between the the actual people that are plugged in, that are cool, that get it, and the people that don't. Maybe I'm not too sure. I doubt it though, because you know, like I said, I think I have pretty good taste when it comes to art, and I just don't see why this has somehow captured the imagination of people i really don't maybe this also speaks to the uh to the general acceptance of mediocrity in society now right there's an argument for that people are saying nowadays that there is no true excellence there are no real true picassos in this kind of modern era that we're living in in this time right mostly everything is a little bit meh it's a little bit safe it's a little bit easy to understand digestible you go to most kind of you know um well-known galleries you know exhibitions around the world the artwork that you see is not really going to challenge you it's not really going to speak to you it's not going to really blow your mind it's stuff you're just going to see and be like oh that's cool stuff that you might have seen on fucking um you know, just browsing around internet stuff you might have kind of seen before, stuff you might have seen in the magazine. It's just, there's nothing that really amazing out there. And maybe that really speaks to why this stuff has become so popular because people maybe identify with it because it represents something from their youth that they really liked. I don't know, but I just don't think it looks good. Personally, I just don't think it looks good. Nothing about it, what I've seen so far, makes me think, oh, wow, I'm missing out on this by not having one of these things. I just, I just don't care, like... Having these things in my avatars, I, think, ah, I just don't get it. I really don't, man. It's so odd. But again, maybe I'm just, um, you know, not really that tapped in. So if one of my followers, one of my fans, um, someone's just passing through, has seen this and thinks, oh, I'm talking out my ass. Let me know, please. Guide me in this. Inform me on what I'm missing out on because, um, I don't know. I just don't understand. I really don't understand. But hey, 
sometimes in life it's not for you to understand sometimes things come about you know just they're just what they are you either engage or you don't it's sort of similar to sports right not everyone gets sports not everyone is entertained by sports it just comes around you like it you do if you don't you don't it is what it is like maybe that's part of the reason isn't it? maybe i'm just thinking I'm, I'm thinking way too deep maybe maybe that's why i don't know who knows who knows who knows um ah, it's another one so jump into this one i thought this is quite interesting news too this is courtesy of hype beast and this is the first official look at the potential union la and nike quartet collaboration and i just want to say flat out because again i think sneaky collaborations nowadays are going through a bit of a weird phase and i feel like they're either using sneaker collaborations as an opportunity these brands right to promote models of shoes that aren't necessarily that popular and to kind of give them another chance, a second, third, fourth, fifth life or whatever. Or it feels like the brands themselves are collaborating with these footwear companies or sportswear companies. They're using the collaborations as an opportunity to kind of explore stuff they could never do on their own in-house, right? Because supposedly from what I read, footwear is one of the most hardest place. It's kind of the hardest industries or categories to get into um, to kind of produce your stuff your own in-house or with your own manufacturers. It's really difficult, which is why a lot of people collaborate with other brands, blah, 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 blah. But I also like this idea that people are just kind of using collaborations as an opportunity to make people fall in love with shoes that they never really gave a second look to. Not a chance, I just never gave a second look. And I think a Nike Cortez won those shoes. I don't think people out there really hate Nike Cortez in that way because it's quite an innocent, easy, um, simple, classic, somewhat modern shape and silhouette. But I think a lot of people just kind of be like, meh, it's a Cortez, who cares? You know what I mean? But when I saw these, I was like, okay, wow. Union have done a great job by somehow taking a Cortez that's a bit meh elevating it to a point where it can be a bit of a neck turner because I don't think anyone has ever kind of twisted the next look at somebody's wearing a pair of Cortez on the street but they've done it with these and they look bloody brilliant I'm not going to lie they look so 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 good um, and again it makes a lot of sense too because the Cortez is something that's kind of um, synonymous with LA and gang culture and all that wallarchy right so there's obviously a connection that way but just in terms of the shoe and what it actually looks like they smashed it. Let, let's not deny it. They've absolutely smashed it. Um, as you can see on the screen, it's kind of um, majorly a sort of camel suede colorway with little flashes of red um, suede or nubuck on the upper. It's got an interesting lace choice that's sort of, you know, got a mixture of the suede and the cream in it um, all linked into one. It's got the tab right towards the front. And then on the paneling on the upper, it's sort of split. The, the interesting part is this, right? here and here somehow they split the paneling so it's like suede and then on the other side it's kind of like whatever this denim -y sort of uh, jacket sort of print is on the other side of thing which is really cool i don't think i've ever seen that on the shoe where the paneling sort of split like that in that way and then there's one half this so is basically three bits of material that you can basically see right i'd imagine like one two three like in those kind of bits or maybe here or pattern it looks really really cool um obviously how they've done the tongue they've done the back flap i'm sure if you lift it up there's a, probably another sign there with nike and whatnot the midsole <coughs> um they've kind of made the sole it's a little bit more rugged than what you do from a classic cortez it kind of makes it look a bit acgs in one way shape or form with this kind of you know little mud guard or back flap here in the front and assembly here towards the toe but it just looks really absolutely cool it really really does um here's a article courtesy of hype sort of explaining a little bit more about it it says um on top of giving nike the dunk low a midnight navy uh sorry the dunk low midnight navy makeover chris gibbs union la in prince to add a nike cortez to its list of collabs giving the sneaker world an early look in the 2022 collab um solab uh teased two colorways a khaki and a black turquoise and green colorway oh i like that one um um, as this is just the first look, there could be possible slight changes to the colorway and design, but these images should be enough to get fans a good idea what to expect next year. And at the bottom here, we have this sort of like gray khaki colorway that looks fucking banging. Again, look at how they split the materials here. That looks really cool, especially here at the back. Oh, I guess the back is a split, so it's split towards the front with this sort of suede and whatever this denim type material is that obviously extends onto the back. So it's sort of like a window in that little side panel there. And it's all tonal as well. The laces, like, that looks so good, man. 
legitimately i've never considered wearing a quarters in my life i think the the my quarters history begins and st starts at maybe 14 years of age if i'm not mistaken i had an actual pair of quarters and i had a pair of reborn quarters so i had a pair of fake ones that weren't really quarters but they were made by i'm gonna say alisi alisi at that time I think had a lot of models that were basically Nike shoes without the branding or without the logo. And I remember getting a pair of Cortez that I absolutely lived in. Then because I didn't have any money, of course, my parents didn't have any money. They then bought me the pair of Elise's from Sports Direct that was, that was a copy. And then for whatever reason, I decided to take those shoes to school and wear them and play football straight away. And obviously, at the, if you know anything about Cortez, especially the front, you start running in them and scuffing and playing football in them. It scuffs them and it makes them flick and get all mashed up and tools that just after one day, I basically turned them into absolute astroturf they were absolutely banged and i remember getting absolutely i remember getting in big trouble by my parents actually i think i actually might have got banged too <laughs> i'm not gonna tell, i think i might have got swung across the living room because of it as well because i remember those elites i had were like all white um maybe with like a with like a green symbol or something and i came back home and they were like you know majorly brown the front of it was all peeling off and shit because obviously they weren't really great leather because it was mostly an elisi shoe i got in mad trouble for them so that's the only time i've actually worn elisis and for the most part my feet considering how fat they are or wide towards the front they're not exactly suited to that elisi silhouette but these look so good i'm willing to give them a try i really am willing to give them a try they look so 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 banging um especially this kind of khaki colorway again it's very similar to like the um what is it called the tom Sachs mars yard that i've obviously beaten into the ground and i now wear his gym shoes so maybe that's why i'm kind of on them again but i just love the application of them again i love how they've kind of put them together i also love the idea that they've somehow managed some they've somehow managed to make someone like me who hasn't necessarily thinking about a cortez in many many years pay attention to them and it kind of reminds me of what virgil was doing rip during his time working with nike and doing off-white projects what he did really well was he was able to take really mundane silhouettes and sort of bring them into the sort of quote-unquote 21st century or make you question your love for a silhouette in the first place that's what he really did as well that was really good i think that new air force one mid that's meant to come out soon was a really good um example of it right like do you really love air force ones yeah cool all right cool what about this air force one that's completely nuts do you really love him for real for real and i think that's what he did a really good job in i think union are doing equally of a good job in these two because think back to the shoes that are originally got leaked i think a few months ago a couple of weeks ago sorry maybe a few weeks ago um the air jordan 2 they're again another model that i've never thought about i think most people that love jordans would say you skip a jordan 2 you go straight from a one to a three to a four to a five to a six to a seven to an eight to maybe a 10 right but you don't go anywhere near twos um so the fact that he was able to take a two and elevate them and bring them to that level um what virgil did with the lows was sick and then obviously what union have done with their mids they look cool too so i'm definitely um anticipating a lot of people who want into both shoes the cortez and the jordan two, being fans of them and trying to get a pair of uh, trying to get their hands on them once they eventually do come out and then here's some pictures here another article courtesy of hypebeast showing what they actually look like um on the feet and let's not play around in it these look fucking fire um and again mostly these sort of like sneaker pictures i've always made my point here on this show i'm a huge hater of flipping sneaker photography i think it looks super disgusting and horrible um but these look really cool here the simple way they've kind of approached them with just a kid wearing some white pop socks and the shoes just speaking for themselves the only thing i'd say is a slight thing seeing the shoe now in a side profile all in is it me or is the sole a bit bigger than what actual cortez are meant to look like did they actually stack the sole somewhat which again, maybe you might remind me a little bit slightly of what um what what's that called? what's that brand called um Com de Garçon did with their Nike Cortez right a few seasons back they made these really exaggerated platform um Cortez with this sort of like a black and white square print on the sole and they were super super fat the only problem is they didn't come in men's sizes I'm assuming a lot of dudes will probably end up wearing them but I'm assuming they just came out to women's but maybe there is some sort of extension they've done on the sole because they look really cool there man and maybe again this flap thing is maybe a little nod to what um what's the Sakai have done with their Nike collaboration it's sort of like a a flap a back tab on the back tab maybe 
but it, may, it looks like more like you flick it up there's another logo underneath it I think in that regards but these look so so good and again I've never considered wearing a pair of Nike Cortez but I might consider wearing a pair of these when they do eventually come out they're meant to be cheap Cortez's they're not meant to be like $400 so you're hoping retail wise they're going to be fairly cheap and these are easy shoe to kind of rock um, definitely something that you might want to double up on as well in that respect especially considering the tongue and what they look like they kind of got that vintage like I said Tom Sachs Mars Yard feel about them but they look so good man they really really do look good i'm not going to lie i'm a big big fan of these and again big oh yeah see there you go the the, the little hill tab has got the um, union la logo on it and it's also if you lift it up it's got nike written underneath on the back so i think nike would be happy about that too they get the ability to plaster their own brand alongside what union are doing there too but these look so effing good man oh so 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 good um again no idea on release date i don't think they've said in the article here whether or not they're going to come when they're going to come out sorry um i'm sure they're going to drop fairly soon sometime within the new year uh, maybe around the spring because you know cortez is our breath of summer shoe so i maybe see that happening or maybe they're meant to be a winterized um version of a cortez i'm not too sure but maybe around the spring i'd imagine um they're going to be again really hard to get hold of as per usual you're going to have to put a raffle entry in to gain a chance or win a chance to be able to buy them yourself which is absolutely diabolical but all in all, you're definitely going to have a pair of shoes that you're never going to see again too often. Because I get maybe this is again two things. Maybe this is Nike's way of reintroducing the Cortez because they do that quite often. They'll kind of select a shoe, give it to certain brands to redesign or to interpret in their own way. Then they'll drip feed those over a calendar year or a few months. And that's a way to kind of reintroduce the shoe back into the market. Or it's just a one-off and Uni decided, uh, let, let's go for a Jordan 2 and a Cortez. I don't know. I'm not really too sure. But it does feel like a bit of a concerted effort they're putting forward in terms of doing this shoe so let's see what happens going forward let's see what happens going forward um bear with me one second while i just do this and i'll continue again in one second and we're back we are back okay cool let's continue on with this on i'll cover more than i'll leave you guys because i know this can be a little bit boring um here we go Another one in terms of shoes I wanted to quickly highlight. There's a leaked image of supposedly some new Yeezy um, foam runner that's meant to be coming out soon. Again, a very interesting approach to sneaker design as per usual from Kanye and Yeezy, you know, that team over there. And just something that I just think just looks cool. I'm not really too sure if it's real. I'm not really too sure if it's the final prototype. I'm not really sure if it's just a, a, a prototype they're working on or one of or something that they're kind of working towards but if you think about it from the wave runner that i have the 700 um to the other iterations that came after the fact it does feel like they're slowly but surely tweaking the base model to the point where they think it's perfect right further on down the line they're not just scrapping it and making new shoes i like that approach to design so it's kind of similar to what i guess what iphone i guess what apple did with the iphone they release the original iphone and little it, it, every single year they basically tweak it you know they maybe get rid of the bezel they change the thinness they maybe change how the antennas are all are kind of you know lined up on the outer casing um operating systems like little things that they change over the years the dimensions of it maybe offer different sizes but they don't fundamentally change the entire shape and how you basically interact or touch with the iphone it's basically the same sort of phone from the first one that dropped to the 13 that we have now it basically works a similar sort of way and i like that he's doing the same thing with sneaker design because i think sneaker design in general there's been too much of there's been a tendency i feel like in footwear design to just kind of throw out the old model and just start again from scratch when sometimes the model that people actually enjoyed maybe just needs a tweak. I think of some of the original Nike Freeze back in the day, right? They were a big sort of misstep from Nike, right? They'd make a Nike Free, like let's say a Nike Free 5.0. It'd be a hit with people. It'd be one of the most worn sneakers of all time. You'd see it worn by many people from like sneakerheads to Taurus and whatever. It'd come in multiple colorways. It'd be really cool design. And then the next one that comes out looks nothing like the Nike Free from previous. Or they've got rid of a feature that everyone thought was great. But why don't you just tweak that original base model a little bit? Maybe you adopting the 3% rule that Virgil talks about in his design, or maybe somewhere within the 10, 15, 20% rule, but just tweaking it a little 
little bit so that the elements that were made that shoe so good to begin with are still there but you're also pushing things forward i think of the adidas boost that's another good example right the runners they kind of fumbled the bag on that one too because i forgot which model it was but there was one boost that was really popular that people absolutely loved then for whatever reason a couple models down the line they take away the features that everybody loved in them and end up being a completely different shoe and they end up not being even comfortable so the one thing that people loved about them being comfortable about them being shoes you could walk around in for ages even though the boost material kind of you know died after a certain mileage but still there were shoes that people kind of swore by in terms of being a great little um tourist stomper if you're going away on a trip somewhere you want to wear something that you could basically be able to wear you know throughout the day traveling around walking around the city center and also going out for dinner they suddenly change them and then they become not popular again and they have to go back to drawing boards and i think the boosts that they've released now have kind of harkened back to adopted elements of the original boost that when they first came out people always know and loved so i just do like that approach i really do and as you can see from what i got in this image it basically looks like a shoe that's been 3d printed to some extent um they've got these little side vents on the side that kind of make it look a little bit like um a standard foam runner um but then this outer shape looks more like a 700 than the foam runner does the foam runner maybe looks more like a clog you would say more like a crock in that way whereas it feels like this looks like more they basically took a foam runner i don't maybe it's one of the recent ones maybe the wave one and they've basically made it into some sort of shell one piece design i'm sure it's been fused somewhere along here it looks like there's a little bit of a midsole split there they put together i'm not really too sure the sole looks like it's a little bit the, out, the outer sole looks like it's maybe been pressed on there a little bit but i'm not too sure but overall it does look like they've taken a wave runner simplified it talking out all the innards and basically leave you with this outer shell and that's basically where they want to go forward and i think if you remember kef if you remember correctly if i remember correctly there was an episode or some sort of interview that kanye did where he spoke about wanting to have shoes down the line wanting to design sneakers that don't have laces i think that was one of his major sticking in points like i think he hates logos hates laces um uh, or like overt logos on the kind of upper or the outside of a shoe so i think later in that line he went to get to a point where you didn't need a logo to dis to kind of um discern what a shoe was and i think he's achieved that with the wave with the kind of the easy 300s or 350s right you see them from afar you know exactly what that shoe is you don't need to see a logo or anything on them so that's one thing he's chipped off the mark and then the non laces thing is something that you've definitely seen um something he's been pushing a lot with yeezys because most yeezys for the most part especially ones that aren't um socks type designs that have a tongue they usually have elastic around the tongue so if you end up buying a size usually don't need laces because the elastic kind of keeps your foot in there um for the most part and most people i guess won't really wear yeezys you know to kind of play sports and i'd assume unless you're wearing maybe the basketball pairs or whatnot so that's a really smart idea in terms of doing that and putting that forward so who knows if these are even something that's going to drop if there's something something people are just working on but um i like the design itself the article quickly says here thanks to sneaker insider sneaker john's new we now have a leaked image of what is believed to be the new adidas yeezy foam runner design the leak of the potential upcoming silhouette features a design reminiscent of the existing model um sporting a white base and a black rubber threads on the outsole the slip on is construction of a single piece of the so maybe it's maybe it's just a foam runner but it doesn't look like it looks more like a wave runner to me like a regular 700 but especially with the outsole here because i guess one of the things that maybe looks makes a foam runner look more like a crook is more like the outsole is not there's not really a sneaker outsole it's basically just whatever material they've used on the upper it's on the underside it's on the bottom of it whereas this looks like actually they've tried to construct a sneaker that's similar to what a foam runner does on the, on the upper but more sleek and then they've added an outsole to make him look more like a sneaker more like a trainer right in that, reg in that regard um and i guess it would probably weigh a little bit slightly heavier than what a foam runner would do considering they've kind of added a full um outsole there on the you know on the outside of it but i like the shape i love the design i'm a big fan of them maybe there are still some holes there where you could pop in some laces if you wanted to i'm assuming they probably made them so you don't need to wear laces um just easy shoes to put on and put off maybe a shoe you could maybe take to the beach really easily i'm not too sure but either way i'm a big fan of them i think it looks sick and for the most part from what i've seen with yeezy i'm enjoying more so the sneakers that are kind of pushing and questioning um your 
kind of taste levels or your preferences for sneakers. I don't like the kind of classic sneaker sneaker things that they make. But I think when they start to do crazy shit like this, like those moon boots that they've put out recently, those are things that I really definitely I'm st I'm up for kind of copying because they're a bit challenging. Um, they're a bit hard to wear. They just look nuts. They look like nothing else on the market at the moment. Um, and I just think they have a really sign. They have a really they have a signature style and design without having a signature style and design. If that makes sense, like everything looks different, but everything kind of looks slightly similar um but i also like the fact that they haven't just done what every sneaker company's done and just gone to nike's archive nike's catalog and just you know try to create their version of an air max one their version of an air force one their version of a jordan like they've actually gone and tried to do their own version of sneakers maybe harkening back to some athletic shoes from back in the day but taking really obscure references maybe from new balance a6 you know whatever else company deodora and try to bring them into the 21st century so i think these all look really really fantastic and i really can't wait for more of that stuff to drop i really can't wait for more of that stuff to drop but yeah i think i'm going to end it there for the next show episode number three five three two so i think so five three two um it's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual if it's the first time check out the show via youtube please make sure you smash like hit subscribe leave a comment down below if you listen to the show via the podcast that please leave me a five star review i greatly appreciate that i'm going to be doing a little special dj mix later on so if you're around definitely stick around for that one that's going to be fun to play and do those kind of things but apart from that I've enjoyed your time. I hope you've enjoyed mine. Subscribe to my Patreon, of course, at patreon.com for Agostino. Those episodes out there already. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care. Be safe. Take care. Be safe.